Hi, I'm Jacqueline McKenzie, and I play Charlotte in uh, The Converse, and my character is able to traverse both this white colonial world and the Maori world. She's lived in both and is fluent, absolutely fluent and brilliant at speaking te reo. And uh, because of that, she's very useful. <laughs> useful for a um, lay preacher who finds himself at the end of the earth in New Zealand in 1830s. In 1830s. 30s. Um, and needs to be able to communicate with the local iwis. So I'm actually quite useful as a, as a character. So. Um, kia ora, uh, ko te ore ore ngā tau Melbourne tōku ingoa. I te tautaku māma no ngā te prau, i te tautaku pāpā uh, no ngā tūhoi. Um, so yeah, I'm also from ngā te porau. Uh, yeah, got good people <laughs> coming out of our iwi, obviously. Um, yeah, and I play rangi mai. It's grateful to play rangi mai, yeah. Kia ora. Uh, my name's Guy Pearce. I'm from, well, England, Australia, New Zealand. The Netherlands. The Netherlands <laughs> now, <laughs> spit all over the place. Uh, I play Munro, so I, I play the man that Lee uh, spoke of, who's who's trying to find himself, really, and has come out from England to New Zealand in the 1820s, 1830s, as a lay preacher uh, for a, a small European community that's been set up uh, in a remote part of New Zealand. Um, and, uh, yes, um, lands in this strange land and... Uh, is, is faced with all sorts of challenges uh, while he's there. There is, um, everybody's heard of missionaries. The English used to excel in sending missionaries out as the advance guard of colonialism. Um, after their uh, efforts in Africa failed dismally with Livingston, et cetera, et cetera, the Anglican church, the English church, founded by Henry VIII, decided to set up a what was called a lay ministry, church missionary society, whereby they got men, always men, who had some skills uh, like stonemasons or builders or shipbuilders or people who could teach by example, spread the word of God, but also teach how to build a house or do something like that to the indigenous culture. So they were a different kettle of fish some of the some of the lay preachers that came out to New Zealand had been one of them had been in the army, another one had uh, fought in the Napoleonic Wars, so they had backgrounds that were not usually associated with clerical men. And, and, um, and they're, they're far more interesting character. They're not ordained, are they? No, they're not. Because they don't proselytize as much. They bring the word of God, so to speak, through their actions. And, rather than through just sermons. In Monroe's character, uh, it allowed us to create a more of a humanist, a man that actually may, may have even doubted whether God existed or not after what he'd been through, and but was using religion as an escape route, really, from his own horrors. It's been ascertained that, uh, millennia ago that the Polynesians were travelling there navigating their way around the entire Pacific. Um, and uh, the settlement of Aotearoa, New Zealand, is dated somewhere between 800 AD and 1300 when um, the, the place was so-called discovered. Before that, New Zealand, which was a young country in terms of geolo geology and volcanic era, is, um, was really a giant bird reserve with no human beings in it until a certain period um, in the Middle Ages. And um, the Polynesians that came there identified themselves as Māori. They didn't call themselves that, though. That came later. And uh, they had seen no European... There was no contact between European culture and Polynesian culture until about 1600. And then... Um, the period we deal with is the early, 19, early 18th, 19th century, shall I say, when there's first contact between colonising settlers from England coming to, um, to a country where there was 
that numbered probably 300,000 Māori are loose. They're outnumbered 30,000 to one. By. So it's how they made landfall and took, um, you know, set up the first col colonialists. But uh, most of the stories we deal with is deal, uh, dealt with the period after that when there was far more European colonists and Māori were being subjugated and wiped out, so to speak, in endless battles. But this period is when they were dominant, but they were just introduced to the musket and firepower and gunpowder and, and the repercussions of all that. I have to be perfectly honest here, and that was uh, Lee Tamahori and Guy Pearce, because they both uh, had, well, I've known about them forever, but they were two of my favourite films were Once Were Warriors and The Proposition. And as an actor growing up, I mean, I didn't really want to act growing up, so I never w saw films. I never saw, I saw a bit of television, but mainly I was out watching the football and doing other things. And uh, so when I come across a film myself that actually touches me, that I haven't learnt because I went to acting school or I haven't been told I must watch because someone's in it, uh, those two films just knocked me out. I, and I'll never forget them. It was a visceral, incredible experience watching them. And I recognised myself and my world and my country and my people in both of them. They're both deeply human stories. And... Here I was offered to do a film with the instruments of that incredible experience and it was Lee Tamahori and Guy Pearce and then I read the story and I just, that it was so moving and so I knew that the opportunity to tell a story that would reach everybody, even though it is a story uh, set in 1830s British colonial New Zealand from the, te from the Maori and British perspective, it's because of who is in it and, and who has created it. It is a human story. You can recognise yourself in all the characters. It's about fathers and daughters and soldiers and men, children. It's about grief. It's, it's about... It's, it's a human story and I knew that that's what I'd be a part of and, and it did not fail me at all. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, it's so honoured to be in it and still honoured to be in it watching it. I can't believe it. I recognised everything up there on that screen as the dream that Lee shared with me through the writing of the script and also in the creating of the movie. I was there and that's what we made. And it's that's a rare thing. I know that sounds very strange to say, but so often you can watch something you're in and think, oh, geez, I don't know where I was, but I don't remember. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to be like that. Or, you know, there's often a disconnect between what we feel we're in or what we're making, and this is just not the case. It was like it was an entire dream, and, you know, it, and I was in it, and I'm still a part of it. And so, yeah, it's just the most extraordinary adventure of my working life. I think... For me, um, uh, the story about Rangi Mai um, and Munro and her learning the ways of the Pākehā, uh, a similar thing happened to one of my actual tipuna, one of my actual um, ancestors. And he actually went to go and learn uh, Karakia um, Hahi Mihinari, and his name was Piripitau Matakura. So, similar story. He went to go learn um, about karakia and prayers. And I used to ask my parents, like, oh, why didn't Māori just stick to Māori karakia and Māori prayers instead of going towards, um, you know, missionaries? It was because they were open. Māori were open to learning new things uh, for the betterment of their people. So, yeah, I connected to that story. Um, and that was one one of the many reasons why um, I wanted to be a part of this this Kaipa Banners film. Yeah. Uh, well, for me, uh, the same as Jackie in the first place. Uh, it was knowing Lee was doing this. We've talked about working together for years and have never managed to um, make it work because of various reasons. Um, <clears throat> so to to finally find something that I was available to do and that you know that that um 
really looked like we could do together was really thrilling and of course I read the story and it was as Jackie said also just very moving and really um, fascinating historically um, you know I don't know a lot about this time in history in New Zealand uh, I know a bit about it um, so to sort of delve into that uh, was was quite intriguing obviously um, and to talk to Lee about it specifically because Lee's such a great um, uh, auteur in, in you know uh, and historian really um, so there's just no question you know about, about saying yes to it yeah